hope that you're doing good. I know that's hard being away from home for so long. Hi guys! So today I'm finally making the long-awaited video on getting into Yonsei University. So let's get to it! Yonsei University has three campuses. The first one is Songdo campus or international campus which is located in Incheon. Incheon is an hour away from Seoul. The second campus is the main campus and the main campus is located in Seoul, Xincheon. The third campus is Wonju campus, also known as the Future Campus or Mirai Campus. Let me just like get out Wonju campus from the picture because actually I don't know that much in depth. But what I do know is that for those wanting to apply to the performance arts section of Yonsei University, they need to go to yonseiart.com. I will put the link in the description box so you can go check it out there. And basically the admission process is through your performance videos. You can either send a performance video of you singing or dancing or doing both if you want to do the K-pop major. And the application deadlines and everything is present on the website. The international campus and the main campus are institutes that are together. So when you're applying to Yonsei, you're actually applying to the main campus because that's like the main campus. And if you do get accepted as a freshman, you have to spend your first year in the international campus. And also, if uh, once your freshman year is over, you have a choice to still stay in the international campus or go to the campus in Seoul based on your major. So if all your major classes are there in the international campus, you don't really need to go to Seoul. A lot of students tend to stay back in the international campus in Incheon and study from there for the rest of their years. Whereas others who just want to go to the Seoul campus or probably do not have enough classes for their major in the international campus end up going to the main campus in Seoul. So when you're applying, the applying criteria is the same because you are applying to the main campus. There are two ways to apply. The first one is the normal track and the second one is the scholarship track. Those who want to do to try for the scholarship track, the scholarship track is also known as KGSP and it is available, the, the, the links are down in the description for KGSP and the NIIED website. What you do is you send your high school transcripts, your certificates, your recommendation letters to the Korean embassy in your country and the Korean embassy will review all the information and if they find you suitable for, for the university, then they pass it on to the second round where NIIED officials, the ones who provide the scholarship, look, take a look at your profile, take a look at all of your files and recommendation letters and if you pass that, you go to the third round where the university sees if you are fit for them and if you are applicable or not. Now, um, the thing is that when you're applying through the scholarship track, you have so you can only apply to two or three universities, not more than that. And if you do get selected, you have to choose one from all the three universities. It also has a lot of benefits where if you receive the scholarship, the scholarship basically pays for your tuition for all eight semesters. It pays for your medical fees, your health insurance, it pays for your flight tickets, I think coming and going back for your initial settlement issue, uh, settlement payments and when you're leaving Korea, it helps with you moving back to your country as well. And other than that, you also get a stipend of around $800 from the Korean government for your normal lifestyle. If you want, want to maintain this scholarship, you really need to keep your CGPA above 3.5 GPA I guess, I'm not really sure, I will get back to you in the comments about that. And you need to also get a topic score above level 3 within one year. So if you fulfill these criteria, like keep your GPA above a certain point all semesters, and if you do get a topic 3 in the one year you have been given to study Korean, then you can keep your scholarship. And even your Korean language program will be paid by the Korean government. So this is how you apply for the scholarship track. For the normal track, it does not have a scholarship within. 
it's just you applying normally and if you apply from the university's website all links are in the description i've repeated countless times so yeah the links are in the description if you apply from the normal ways uh, then you either apply from the university's website or you apply from common app now the only difference is that the application fee is cheaper when you're applying from the common app from the common app it's 70 dollars the normal university website it's a uh, hundred dollars You can either study in the main college where your classes will be carried out in Korean and then there's UIC where you're studying in English under an international college and the admission criteria for both is different. Getting into UIC, um, the acceptance rate is I think 15% whereas the main colleges the acceptance rate is like 5%. For the normal Korean classes, depending either on either of the tracks, the required documents are the same. First of all, you need your high school transcripts and that, and also you need to remember that your grades need to be really, really outstanding if you're going to study in Korean. Your math grade needs to be above an 80% and you need a topic score of level 4 minimum, like minimum level 4. And also you need rec two recommendation letters from your high school teachers. You need your certificates and list of achievements, your extracurriculars to get into the main college. These are the requirements. Also remember that if you're applying to the main college in Yonsei University, in case your department, is, your college is the College of Medicine or Dentistry, College of um, Sports and anything where you need to perform, you will also have to give a performance test. Yes. When you apply to UIC, it has three divisions. It's UD division, HAS, and ISED. ISED is science engineering, the science and engineering department. For HAS, it's humanities, arts, and social sciences. And then you have UD, which is under the division, which basically deals with literature and economics, politics, international studies. I know better about UD because I'm part of UD. My major is econ. For those applying to UIC, they need transcripts, their transcripts to have outstanding scores, you need your two recommendation letters minimum, you need to give them a list of your extracurriculars, certificates and achievements. You definitely need a transfer certificate from your high school and the difference is that if rather than a topic score, you need to give them an IELTS score. So the IELTS score or the TOEFL score is for English proficiency. You need to get a minimum 6 on 9 for IELTS and for TOEFL it needs to be a minimum of 850. For those who are native English speakers, this requirement is waived off. And personally for me, even though I'm Indian, and I, but I studied in an international school when I was young, due to that, they waived off my, this necessity for me as well. Like, I did present my IELTS test, but they're like, oh, we do not need it because you've studied in an international school. Just in case, do keep, in, keep an IELTS score with you. All the documents that are being provided to the university need to be 100% original. Also, your high school transcripts need to be apostled by the government of your country. Now, apostling is basically the government acknowledging that your high school transcripts are 100% original and they're not fake. So you need to give in your apostle documents to the university and you will not get them back because the university needs to keep your record. And it has to be original. You need to send it by post or you can give it to them in person um, if you're living in Korea. Also regarding the apostling, it depends where you're staying and how long it takes in your country to get your apostle. So based on that, get your apostle in advance because the earlier you get it, the better. Because an apostle, is, it does have an expiry date but it is definitely around two years or more. So just get your documents apostled and when the university asks for you to hand in the documents, just send the original documents. three rounds for the application process the first round the second round and the third round and for the first the first round it caters to the spring semester admissions the second round caters to both spring and fall semester applications and the third round is mainly for the fall semester the first round is from July to August the second round is from October to November and the third round is from January to April 
If you are going to apply to either of the rounds, I would recommend you to apply to either the first or the third round because for the second one, a lot of students get cut out because for the, for the first one, if you're applying to the spring semester in the second round, the first round already has a lot of incoming freshmen for the spring semester. So if you're applying for the spring semester, you will get shortlisted or you would be put on a base waiting list. And if you're applying for fall, you might have higher chances of getting in, but a lot of seats are still remaining for the students who actually want to apply for the fall semester in the third round, which is why you should always apply in the first or the third round, that they're more recommended based on the people I've talked to and the experiences of other people. Since the application is online, you've got to scan all your documents and you've got to upload them on the website. Also, you have to write two essays. The first one is a bit shorter and the second one is a five question essay. Like you can choose from one of the five questions and that essay is slightly longer. You should take your time to write it out because it will be criticized and it, it will be checked by the professors. They need to see that you're good at writing but you don't need to be overly confident while writing those essays. So just take your time and consult everybody possible before you submit your essays because this is the first level which you need to clear to move on to the second one. If you do clear the first level of application, like if you clear the essays, then you will get an email from Yonsei telling you that the second level is an interview. For the second level, it's an interview which you can choose to be online or offline depending on your availability in Korea or being abroad. So for the online interview, they ask you questions about yourself, about your motivations, about why you chose Yonsei University as your undergrad college and just it's just a normal interview you don't need to be too tense but you definitely need to be careful of what you're saying and i would highly suggest that you know yonsei university's history especially uic's history and you know what yonsei university stands for like the basic principles so once you clear your essays and interviews you will get an email from yonsei university saying that you've been accepted as a student and you will also get your acceptance letter so after getting accepted, the next thing is that you will be coming to Korea and you will be living in the dorms because it's compulsory to live in the dormitory for a year. I did not because of COVID-19. To come to Korea, you would first of all need to get your visa. Now for the visa, you need to give them your passport photograph depending on the latest visa measurements. You would need them to give them your passport, your acceptance letter from Young's University, and a health checkup proving that you're free of tuberculosis. Based on that and the fee to get the visa, you will finish the process and you will get your uh, get the stamp for going into Korea as a student. Once you're in Korea, you will be going to the dorms and somebody will come. If you request the university, there will be somebody to pick you up at the airport and that person will take you all the way to the university and be your guide to the dormitories. At the dormitory entrance, you again need to give them your tuberculosis report to prove that you're free of any free of TB. And you also need to give them with the list of vaccinations you've done in the past years to just prove that you're healthy and you don't have health complications. There will be somebody to help you make your own bank account in Uri Bank or Uri Unhing. So you don't really need to worry about it. It's going to be really helpful. So no worries. It's going to be quite smooth. You will get your ERC made. The college will help you definitely for that. As a freshman, you need to know that you will be doing RC hours, also known as like residential college program, where you get to know your peers while doing fun activities. And you have to do this for two semesters, and you need a minimum of 12 RC hours and um, six different categories of activities to pass the minimum requirement. Also, you will not be declaring your major in the first year. In the first year, you will just be taking common curriculum classes, which basically brushes up your common knowledge that you learned in high school and brings up everybody coming from different educational backgrounds on the same level so that they understand the university curriculum. You will be having some classes such as like world history, you will be taking introduction classes to your major. So that for the first year usually is completely dedicated to common curriculum. A lot of students finish their common curriculum within the first year but others choose to finish it over time. But you need to remember to finish all the common curriculum courses in order to graduate. 
tuition for Yonsei University in general is 6,300 US dollars and on top of that if you're living in the dormitory the dormitory prices are different based on which dorm you stay in for a triple room a triple dormitory room the price is anywhere from 900 to a thousand dollars for a double room the price is anywhere from an 800 to 900 dollars whereas for a single room the price is um, 2000 to 2400 dollars for the whole semester also your meals will cost based on where you choose to eat. Um, I think that eating at the cafeteria is definitely cheaper, but since the food is not that great, usually a lot of students order takeout or they choose to cook in, cook in the dormitory. So I really cannot tell you the meal expenses because for, for me, I've not looked at the dormitory and I cook on my own. I will uh, like include my other expenses in a different video, but for meal expenses, I'm not really sure. Lastly, you have your textbooks. Not all classes require a textbook. So because of that, um, you usually not, do not spend much on textbooks unless it's really required. But starting from your sophomore year, you will need textbooks related to your major. So you can assume um, for anywhere from 350 to 400 US dollars being spent on your textbooks annually. So guys, um, with that, I have mentioned everything I could possibly think of when it comes to applying to Yonsei University, getting into it as a freshman, and the expenses. If there are more queries, please do mention them in the comments. I will definitely reply and help you guys out if you're curious about it. And I just hope that you liked the video. Also, I would like to mention that I will be, I will try to be regular and I will be posting my vlogs every day on every Wednesday and every Saturday and the timings would be 8 30 p.m. Korean standard time and 5 p.m. in Indian standard time so make sure to like subscribe and share I hope you guys really love the video so thank you for all the support I've been getting and thank you for just viewing my vlogs and just I'm very thankful and grateful bye